Hello, everybody. Welcome to Echo Underground. I am Janine. This is Mike. <laughs> and on this podcast, we talk about music, movies, and... Getting in shape, because Shanique is over here stretching while she's doing the intro very irresponsibly. But, yeah, welcome to the podcast, guys. <laughs> Yo, there's no need to put me on <laughs> I'm here, like, making direct eye contact with her, too. And I'm like, what the hell is she doing? She got work to do. Come on. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm not redoing the intro, so first take, there you first go. Take. First thing. Um, so, hit us up on Twitter. Let us know what you guys think at Equiu Podcast. And today's episode is about a movie which i know we've been slacking on our movies true story called crazy rich agents and the title speaks for himself um no not like crazy asians comma rich asians crazy rich like rich as shit asians (laughs) yeah exactly um so i'm gonna give this movie honestly i thought it was a good time so i'm gonna give it an a Uh, i I really enjoyed the movie Yep, yep yep The acting, I mean, some of the Asian actors, not the best actresses and actors, but it wasn't distracting or anything. Um, it's such a fun movie. And if you guys hear a phone, ignore that because it's not mine. Um, it's such a fun movie. I've been looking around. Like, what the hell is that coming from? <laughs> exactly. Um, it's, it's a fun movie. Um, it had some twists that I didn't see coming. Uh-huh. And it made me laugh, and it had I root for the main characters, and I just enjoyed everything. Even the characters who pissed me off, I was entertained by them. So yeah, definitely, Crazy Rich Agents, solid movie. Michael? I'll also say that this movie was a solid movie. I'm going to go ahead and give it an A as well. And here's why. The problem in the movie wasn't necessarily like a problem it was more of like a mix of ideals from like you know family and culture and all that kind of stuff which they get really deep into and there's like a lot of um you know asians um like a really strong asian soundtrack in this movie too which i'm I'll, I'll also really happy about um like this movie was like you know how everyone is getting their chance in the theaters these days like you know african-american latinos one thing we never see in the theater is like a really strong led america like you know American, what should I say? Friendly? I'm not. I'm not sure. But like something that's very appealing to like the West type of Asian movie, where it's like about Asians. Now, this movie I thought was an A. I thought like you know I got some good laughs out of it. Um, I did get some more insight into like another side of the world, into like you know not only like Singapore, but how like you know rich families are set up, how. It is to like integrate. Like it's a story that's been told a couple of different times already, but I feel like the um the delivery um on this movie in its own like little flair was unique. You know, like it's not like every day you see something about like a girl from New York marrying into um or at least getting tr- trying to get married into um like a really rich dynasty in the in the East. What that got built from the ground up. You know, so it's it's really cool. I liked it. Um, a lot of the characters are very relatable. All the Asians, I feel like, gave me some insight into like Asian culture, and I respected everything. Um, that you know, the movie ended up with anyway. So yeah, I really actually did not think I was gonna like it because the trailer made it look kind of cheesy, to be honest. But <laughs> I liked it. Well, the trailer made me look like uh, it made it seem like a rom com, yeah. which I love rom coms. Some of them, some of very them very hit or miss for me. That's why I came into this very it depends, cautious. Like I guess when a rom com has money behind it, it's really good. Yeah. When it doesn't, though, it shows and like this that. One had a lot of money, but a lot of money behind it. <laughs> All right, so let's let's dissect this. So. I actually want to talk about the soundtrack a little bit. Uh-huh. What made this movie unique too was, like Michael said, all Asian music, all day, every day, from the slag songs to the soul songs. And they were catchy, but I don't know what the fuck I was saying. Bruh, <laughs> yo, like, there was like this very, um, it's like a sample of like an old song in America, I think, that came on in the opening credits. Maybe I'm wrong too. But like, the, the lady. I don't know what she was saying, but I feel like doing, you know, the old school, like, twists. or like, Yeah. You know, I feel like doing, like, them kind of things. I'm like, that's, like, a sound we don't even hear no more. And I'm here trying to jam to this shit. Like, yep. okay, I feel you. Yeah, yeah that was, was during dope. the wedding. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, So, that was really what made her stand out. And shout out to Miguel, because you had a song at the end, which right. was really good. And you were singing your heart out. Yeah. I could listen to I, that I still, song. I, I still feel like, oddly enough, it still fit for the, um, for the tone of how it ended, too. Like, it was yeah. on a very positive note, and it was really nice, so... 
And you know what's weird? Yes, they use Asian music, but you, it doesn't feel like they're using it because they're Asians in there. It uses it feels like it's using it because it it's, fits the yeah, movie, yeah, and it's, that's it's, what we need. Mm-hmm. So I did enjoy that. Um, next up, let's talk about uh, oh man, I'm I Rachel and who her man name again? Who's Nick. her man? Nick? Nick Young. Yeah. They said his name so much. I don't know. <laughs> That's not excuse to know his name. <laughs> no, here's the thing. His name so much I forgot his name. <laughs> no, that and the fact that we just did the Travis one, I oh, true, literally yeah. forgot his name. It's, but check out that podcast, by the way. We yeah, we 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 rip him a new one. <laughs> but yeah, um, so basically, small thing. Nick and Rachel are dating. They're not having fun doing their thing in New York. But he basically lied about his life. Uh-huh. And then he's like, oh, yeah, my friend did. He didn't lie about his life. That nigga lied. <laughs> because, okay, he fucking lied. But we will get there. We will get there. And basically, they go to Singapore to for his best friend wedding. Uh-huh. But also so she could finally meet the family. And then she found out all this shit and things go left. Hence, the movie stars. But... What I first want to talk about is Nick Young being a fucking liar oh in the beginning. God. Wow. Okay. Hard so, words. <laughs> what do you think about how... Here's my issue with the way Nick did things. Nick appears to be a very nice guy. Mm-hmm. Even though he's rich, he's not stuck up like most of his family. Right. But my issue is he set her up to fail. A little bit. Yeah, I'll agree there. I'll agree there. He did not he present lie. Rachel correctly. Okay, fine, and it also has something to do with, apparently they have something called Radio 1 Asian, where they track Asians and spread all their business. I don't know what the fuck yeah, that can we, can we talk about that scene first of all? Like, yeah, the first scene where, like, everyone finds about a Rachel. Yeah. So, like, this bitchy Asian girl, who's, who, that's all her character is. She don't have a name. I don't care what anyone says. She doesn't have a name. Yeah. And she's like, um... She basically sees Nick. She's like, oh, there's Nick. And then he kisses his girl. She's like, mm. Mm. And basically, she takes a... She's like, she does a, like, selfie. And she sends it to, like, one person. And it gets spread everywhere. Yeah. And so the mom finds out and everything. Now, my issue with Nick in the first scene. Let's discount Radio 1 Agent. Which was very well done. Like that whole scene where everyone found out. Yeah, like a chain of like text messages and everyone getting involved. And it was so quick that before they left the restaurant, the mom called him. Right. And was like, oh, Rachel. And like. The mom is at like Bible study doing the whole thing too. And like the, the ladies at the Bible study. And there's also a, yeah, there's a time zone the different. Isn't there a time zone difference? Yeah, hell out? yeah, there is. So, I don't know. Everyone seems to whatever, but. The mom found out, and then every like, literally in the span of, like, five minutes. Probably less than five minutes. Oh, yeah. But that scene was crazy. But my issue is, he set his girl up to fail. Because he didn't teach her none of the traditions that his family has. Because just because she's Chinese, she's also American. She did not grow up in his family culture. And even if you grow up in the country... Your culture might not be the same as the other parents' culture. So you need to tell her things. He didn't tell her that. He didn't tell her she's rich, which I kind of, I'm okay with that a little bit. But after over a year, you don't tell me. It just seems like you don't fully trust me sometimes. Because she told him everything that she knew. She didn't lie to him once. And he lied about a lot of things. He didn't lie. He withheld the truth. Nigga, that's still a lie. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? But he, like... He didn't tell her about the culture. He, hell, she didn't even know a lot of his family members either. Like, she knew nothing. And he was like, oh, yeah, let me just bring you home. With no, no protection. And he didn't stay with her most of the time when she was there. So she was left alone to the wolves. Yeah. So, like, what do you think of how Nick handled, like, bringing her home? I will say that the idea that Nick didn't say that, hey, I'm rich like Tony Stark. and I'm pretty much like... Asian Bruce Wayne over there, and you know, they said Prince Harry, but yeah, right, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm just using my own characters at this at this point. Like he's like you know Scrooge McDuckrich and shit. Like, yeah. But you know, him with with help withholding that information was not bad because he's trying to make sure that you know his image doesn't look like she has a tiptoe around him because he's so rich, and that's why he likes her so much. Like, he's yeah, saying, but like you don't know who I am, and that's what's so appealing to me. At one point, oh, I'm paraphrasing here, but it's something along the lines of that. Because everyone so far knows who I am. They have already this expectation of me. You know, it's, it's, it's less of me being a human and more being being like this, um, this 
status icon of royalty and all this extra shit. So that's why he liked her. So I'm okay with that part. I will admit that, because t- to be fair, from her from her end too, she started picking up fast. She's like, first class motherfucker with beds and shit. Mm-hmm. Ooh, the pajamas are better than my real clothes. I'm sure she should have started picking up right there. No, like, she did. But I mean, like... Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure she did. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. She, she did start picking up right there. And I'm like, all right, so good. She, she's, she's self-aware that, you know, some red flags need to be thrown right now. Nick should have, however, said that, you know, it's not going to be easy getting... The, 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 tell you what, the talk that he had with his best friend after they left that party boat is the talk that he should have preemptively had with his girlfriend. Like, yo, getting in here is going to be a little weird because let's say we do have, like, a long future together. You know, obviously money got to be talked about, which, you know, if you're going to meet the parents, you may as well, like, you know, start buttering that up early. Um, you got to talk about, like, the fact that you're not from royalty, um, the fact that you don't have any kind of net worth and all that kind of stuff. Like, there's just a whole the laundry list of shit that probably should have got brought up before, or at least, um, like, at least before they hit Singapore. On the plane, at least. I don't know, but they're too busy getting into the Mile High Club on the airplane. But anyway, that's beside the point. She did kind of get left a little bit defenseless. She held herself like a pro for the most part. Big helps to her um, her best friend from college and Nick's cousin, cousin the gay one. The No, I was thinking gay. of Astrid. Astrid as well. She was definitely That's her cousin. Right. And then Astrid the other dude is her, his cousin too. Okay, right. I know there's like a lot of big family over here. And she's, she also has like no family herself. So it's kind of like, you know, like a kind of a... I'm not going to say culture shock, but like a family shock, I guess. Because like she's not really used to like having a big table of big people passing on like dumpling, you know, how to make dumplings and talking about how everyone's doing and all this stuff. They're having little children running around. But like, my, he didn't even take her to the basic. Like, this is my family members and how, how much I'm important. She learned that when she got there. Yeah. And after, that's the thing that made me mad. Because, like, when she talked about not knowing anything about his family, that's just no. Yeah. Like, she should have known, even if, you don't have to say that the person's rich. You could at least tell her, like, what her his mom is like. Uh-huh. Because you can get her personality straight up without mentioning any money. Right. Like, he didn't even do that. He let her completely be blind. Yeah, that's and true. And that's what, I, it's kind of like, that's why I feel like he set her up. Not on purpose. I think he was kind of being a coward. And he also thought she was tough enough to deal with it. But he was kind of being a pussy at the same time. But he still came off likable but naive, I feel like. I, f- I feel like it's because he went a whole year without having to say anything. He got comfortable with that, too. Yeah. Which, which, might lead to, which might actually lead into everything you just said. Like, he got, like, you know, cowardly about it. Because he's like, eh, fuck it, you'll be fine. You know, and... Yeah, but... And, and anytime, listen, if you go that long without meeting anyone's family... Then and they don't even talk about it in the first place, or at least, at least talk about it in the bare minimum. I think you they should... talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying she yeah, knew, but like one minimum. member. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you also you also got to remember, like you know, it's not it's so much as like saying, "Hey, my mom is this way." You should be saying, "Hey, my mom and my extended family and my community that I'm around, my people that I'm like you know in communication with, like those people are." Of a different status in Singapore than what you might be used to in New York, because you're. A pro- Don't get me wrong; she's well off in New York. She's a, um, a, a college professor, but we're talking about billionaires. Yeah, they rich. They well, when they right. say crazy rich, they mean crazy rich. Right. We're gonna get into it at some point in the podcast about the extra ass shit that they did in this movie. That I'm like, you could fund a whole nation with with one party's um budget. That's how fucking rich these motherfuckers are. But, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I, I just feel like Shanique, you know, Shanique has some fair points. Like, she got left defenseless on the way over there. And, you know, considering how the the mom already got set up to be, like, this, um, you know, high-standing, you know, debonair, should I say. I don't know. Some kind of, like, really, really rich person who has, like, a really, really high nose stuck in the air and shit. That, you know, it, it, it would have been definitely worth a warning at that point. You know, like, don't get me wrong her it's kind of weird too because her friend was kind of the same way but obviously less at stake with her friend because she didn't know her friend was that rich either yeah she was kind of surprised right but um there's level to richness in this movie yeah but um levels to being a billionaire apparently <laughs> yeah so another thing i want to talk about which the opening scene where you see nick 
as a child, mm-hmm. I think with his cousin, and then, so it's like Nick's mom and his sister, and then the cousin, Astrid, and then Nick. Mm-hmm. And they go into that hotel. Mm-hmm. That scene was so badass, though. Oh, hell yeah. Because they're like, first of all, those hotel people with the discrimination was pissing me off. Heck yeah. And that's in 1995. So that's the worst part. I know. Like, really? Yeah, like, and first of all, here's the thing. They were just wet. Yeah, the kid was, like, rubbing his shoe everywhere, but he's a child. Right. Like, and it's not like they were screaming and, like, like all crazy. They just, they looked wet because it was raining outside. And the mom and was they, well-spoken. That's the crazy part. Somebody, yeah, the mom was well-spoken. And she had a reservation. And the fact that, one, they refused to give her her reservation uh-huh. pissed me off, too. And then, so she's like, all right, you want to be assholes? I'm going to call my I'll, husband. I'll be right back. <laughs> right, and she asked to call her husband, and they kicked her out of the hotel, make her go into the rain you to a phone booth Heck yeah. to call her husband. So not only did she call her husband, the husband then called his friend. The actual, the, the, the hotel is called Calthorpe or whatever it is, or Calthorpe. Yeah, and like a shame. the actual guy who was named after happened to be in the hotel, but go ahead. Yeah, he happened to be in the hotel, which is his husband's friend, and then the, the friend came down and said, hey, Miss Young, yada, yada. Yo, those white people were shitting bricks. They were like, oh, shit, we just pissed off our future right. boss. We thought the boss was happy to come down here and see us. Like, hey, um, Edward, whatever the fuck your name is, random side character, how are you doing? But he, like, went right past him, right into um, Eleanor's arms and I'll give her a hug. I was like, y'all need to know to get your resumes together because y'all just got fired. <laughs> I know. Like, that was so disrespectful. But what's great to me is that it kind of showed why she's like that. A little bit. Mm-hmm. Because, like, she probably she probably married into money. Like, she probably had some of her own. Yeah. But she definitely married into money, not yeah. even more money. Yeah. And even though she was rich, she was still treated a certain way. So, it kind of got into why her character is the way it is. And also, it showed how Nick was kind of, like, proud of his mom. Because he had that smirk, like, yeah, bitch. Yeah, right. Kick us out of the hotel. Recognize, nigga. We own this shit now. <laughs> <laughs> it basically what happened. But I thought that was a really good opener. Everyone there was like, fuck this person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, next thing, I do want to talk about the rich part. And then we'll finish the plot for the rest of it. But what was the craziest rich thing that happened in this movie? I will actually say that it was the reception. Where the I've seen pictures of Singapore with those um big ass weird shaped trees, but like they did the whole thing up and it looked like it was a theme park. Like it looked like they rented Six Flags out or some shit. I don't fucking know. Where um was that after the wedding? Yeah, like immediately after the wedding, where um those like giant like weird towers were with the trees. Yeah, yeah. It has a name. I don't know what it is. It's really world famous too, and I'm like drawing a blank on it because I'm a, a culture of swine. But whatever. Anyways, that was extra as shit. Like they have like bands out they have like i think the net worth of everyone in that party might have been over a trillion dollars yep like it was a lot of billionaires over there um the fireworks were going off i think like a portion of like the city might have been rented up to just them or something like that i don't even know but like everything was lit um and i may as well even lump the, the wedding to this part too like oh uh, you took mine that was gonna oh be I, fine. I, I, I won't even say nothing now. you can go ahead go ahead all right. But that shit was extra, too. Uh, yes. Extra as fuck. The wedding. Okay. The wedding of the best friend to his wife, who is crazy, but she actually is a nice person. She's mm-hmm. one of the nicest characters. Her friends though are bitches. But Heck yeah. the wedding to the best friend and his wife, who are, like, one of the best characters, one of my best characters, but best people in this movie, um, was over the top. So over the top. First of all, they took a church and made it into like a fucking jungle. To the point even Eleanor was like, what the hell is this? Are we in a like, nice patty? Like, like what, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Um, that on top of that. Um, then the mom was like, the mom of like the um, husband. The mom of the best friend getting married. She was so stuck up. She didn't let anyone sit there. But Rachel somehow got in there, which earned a lot of respect for her. And then work on later, but you know, we'll get oh, there. Oh, yeah, princess, the princess lady? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know about right. Right. So, first of all, they had trees and everything. Everyone's in like these gowns. There's paparazzi outside. The church is big as shit. And then, and then, 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 everyone is like in these fancy tucks. But here's where the writing gets extra. Oh, hell yeah. I know you're going for this one. It starts. All of a sudden, the aisle becomes like a little pond. And I'm like, 
First of all, <laughs> first of all, why you can't be walking in water and hill like that? And it becomes a little pond. They have a beautiful cover of um, Elvis falling in love, and live and everything. It's beautifully shot. But when the owl becomes a pond, I'm just like too much. Teen too much. This is what rich people do. First you turn a church, a, a place of God, into a jungle. Then you make it flood with water. And then her dress. Oh my god. Her yeah. dress is so beautiful. But I could tell it's expensive as shit. And she's just it. walking in that pond. And it's such a beautiful scene because you see how much Rachel loves his love Nick and you see how much his um the best friend and the bride loves each other but the pond and the jungle and the church and that church is probably old too and they some they had enough money to say the person was like oh we no this, this, this is a landmark but we gonna flood this <laughs> shit right, right. <laughs> like, you know that's how much money they had and I just thought that was so ridiculous I looked at Michael I was like never even right. if I had money, I would I, not I, want to walk in I, water like I that. I said it's the most extra fucking thing they could have done. Like, you know what? It would more forty extra? million dollar wedding, yo. Yeah, forty million dollars. So that's plus the reception, probably the honeymoon and the wedding. And you know what? Extra, she came out on a boat, and I was expecting that. I was expecting a little boat or something for her to come out. I of. thought it was gonna be one of them things, like you know, in Asian countries, like this guy is like on a raft, has like these long ass like bamboo sticks, like rolling yeah. down the river. I thought that was gonna happen. I'm like, no way. That's not big enough. If they did though. I will honestly say that was the most rich peopleiest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like at this point, you have too much money. <laughs> like now you're just fucking with it. Yeah, and I was just like, all right, yeah, you guys love each other, and technically y'all rich as shit, but damn, that was damn, a lot. Man. That, that was, was a, a lot. Whole lot. There was a lot of things though. Like first of all, um, I'm about to say Aquafina. When she's in this movie, she's an Asian rapper. She plays um, the best friend Pigwin, mm-hmm. and her house was ridiculous too. Yeah, not as ridiculous as Eleanor, but that was still ridiculous for us commoners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> us peasants. Great, big ass house, so many rooms. The guest room looked like another apartment. Um, their house where she first meets the mother is big as shit. Like everything is big and beautiful. Hell, even the ending with that big ass boat hotel thing. That was so beautiful. They literally have the biggest boat I've ever seen on top of three, three buildings. Three, three skyscrapers on three top of that. Skyscrapers. I'm like, what? And then the Bachelorette party, they both went to islands. Actually one flew a helicopter yeah. to a boat. A cargo ship fucking rented out for a party and he had a rocket launcher. <laughs> yes. And then then his friend flew that helicopter to an island where they just chill. Like, what the fuck? Do you not have work? I guess not. When wedding season, you don't have work. I don't yes, know. Son. Do they? Who knows? If I get that rich, I'm gonna stop working. I'm let's fuck that. Fuck that. I'm keeping me and like twenty, my next twenty generations rich as shit. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen for you. Yeah, Yo, especially because I'll probably still be kind of cheap. I'll be like, eh. right. But uh, Gucci. Nah, here's some here's some sketches. <laughs> <laughs> But I was just like, man, that to me was the most rich, like, over display of rich shit that I've ever seen was that wedding. And a reception combined, yeah. Definitely. That whole wedding was, like, an example of, like, I'm rich, bitch. Right. But, so, let's let's just talk about, we're going to talk about Nick and Rachel, because they were most in the movie. But I want to actually talk about another side storyline that was going on was Astrid and her husband. Her husband, Michael. Now, they were kind of a parallel to Nick and Rachel. Uh Where, basically, Astrid was so rich, right? She owned a bunch of real estate. And she was doing the damn thing, right? And But she was nice as shit. Like, she was so nice. And she had a son that she loved. She was one of the best characters in the movie. Because she was not mean to Rachel for no reason. Like, right. she was nice and she looked out for her. And to the point that Rachel and her actually had a relationship with. I thought that was pretty cool. But her husband is the definition of a bitch person. He seemed so cool. And I wanted to yeah. like him. They, they, they intro him very nice. Like, you know, 
Yeah. I, th- I thought we were supposed to like sympathize with him at first, and I was like, oh, never mind, switch. No, he had a hint though. Like I saw he had a little resentment. Yeah. Towards mm-hmm. his wife mm-hmm. when he when Astrid was like, oh, you'll probably like Rachel. And she's like, oh, because she's a commoner like me. And that's right, when yeah, I was getting yeah. hit. Oh, like, there it is. Mm, Some it shade in there. There's like, yeah. I was like, there's not. There's no. And then also when she hid all her fancy stuff, I was like, mm, her man's insecure. Yeah. And like, I could see the way they treated Rachel. I bet he's been dealing that long, long time. But he's an accomplished military man. Right. And he's starting his own business. So it's not like, yeah, he's not crazy rich. But he's doing something for right. himself. So, but I did, and basically what turns out, he ended up cheating on her. Which I'm going to put spoiler in the title because I didn't mention that, but we already spoiled it. Yeah, Whatever. Of course. It's based off a book, so technically it's already out there anyway. But, um, basically he ends up cheating on her, right? And it's basically he, his phone comes up and his mistress is like, oh, yeah. You know, my bed's empty without you, yada, yada. And I was like, oh, man. And then the scene in the car and at the end to find a relationship for me. I was definitely on Astra's side. I didn't agree with him a little bit at all. What do you think? Like, I mean, I agree with you. Like, at the end of the day, if you're the one that cheats, you're the one that's wrong. Because if you didn't talk about it and really get the shit off your chest like you should have, then you, you chose the unhealthy way out of this. And you have a lot to lose. Cause you have a son, look, man, look, look how and a first, beautiful wife. On top of that, look how hard it was for Rachel to get into the family just to be the dude's girlfriend. And you're already married in. And you were here acting like a whole bitch. Like, dude, you need to get your shit together and realize that the shit right in front of you is what you have. I'm not saying it's like a gold digger or nothing like that. Like, don't lose all your money because the family's rich and all that shit. But I'm saying, like, you know, be respectful about, like, the fact that y'all two are different, but appreciate that that's what's keeping y'all together. Because she put it in good terms before, like, I'm not responsible for making you feel like a man if you're not a man at all. Yeah. And that's really she, what it comes down to. Like, he just decided, hey, um... He felt emasculated. My, my, my ego is, yeah, my ego is real bruised, and, you know, it's your fault because you're super rich and I'm super poor and, you know, we're all going to be, like, and this here's weird the thing. reverse He probably Cinderella wasn't even thing. as poor... Because the apartment they live in, he bought it. Well, he's poor by comparison. Because there's... Yes. <laughs> yes. <I laughs> there's there's billionaires and there's millionaires. And they're like two different classes. So I can see what he was feeling. I'm not going to sympathize with that. Because he came up to me as a good guy initially. Because I'm like, oh, they got like a little baby together. Obviously, they've been married for a while. You know, he got past what Rachel had to go through. And he's where he is. And I'm like, well... <laughs> I, I guess they needed something else to like, make a parallel to see what the worst case scenario for Rachel could have been had she turned out like him. Which I really think was a good a good job on the for the writer to even, to even show that. Yeah. So, yeah, kudos to them. Yeah, Michael let me down. Like, he, he was so bruised by his ego. And the thing is, maybe she didn't realize she was stomping on his ego. Maybe she didn't. But he should have said something. Yeah, you gotta communicate. And if you don't communicate, like, what do you expect from her? But she's right. right. She eh, she was looking at, you know, that guy, um, another Asian guy. Um, If you watch Glee, he plays Mike Chan on Glee. He was in the movie as her potential oh, love yeah, interest. the bartender from the end or whatever it was? No, he wasn't a bartender. He was oh. a guest. Oh, okay. So, okay, rich. okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> but I, I did like that she said, you know what? It's not my fault that you cheated on me because you could have easily talked to me. Right. I I live in an apartment that you buy. I, you know, I play down my success so I don't even hurt you. I'm doing all this and you're and you're still cheating on me. So mm. nah, but you got to go. I, mean, I felt bad. I felt bad for her because she's one of the few females in this movie that I like. Yeah, they're but, all... I think there's only like maybe three that, that I like. Yeah, the her, best friend, Rachel, and her. Yeah. That's well, about everyone it. Everyone else gave a lot of trouble at some point. Bitches. Um, some of them redeem themselves. At least, well, at least one of them, though, I know. Of, but some of the other ones, like, mm, y'all niggas. <laughs> exactly. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is Rachel and the mom mm. whole thing. Because it's majority. Mm, then we'll get to Nick and, again. That, but, that was the biggest hurdle. And the grandma to some extent. But she yeah. only for like three scenes. Yeah, but. So, the mom, I think, I understood her. She saw Rachel as a person who, because she was American, didn't value family. And the mom basically was going to be a lawyer, but she chose to have 
a family with her husband. Uh-huh. Who was not in the movie, by the way. <laughs> Never showed up in a movie, but we don't got time to cast him. Okay, we got a budget here. <laughs> we spent it all on the house. Yeah, we spent it all on, 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 the, on, the, on the rooftop party on top of three uh, skyscrapers. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. We spent it all on the rich part of this movie. So, that was not important. But, um, ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think the mic picked it up, but it's whatever. That's fine. Yeah, but, uh, basically the mom kind of, you know, she was kind of a hypocrite. Because when she married into the family, right, mm-hmm. the grandmother didn't like her. All right. To the point where the husband couldn't even ask with the grandmother's ring like he was supposed to. Full for the same reason. And pro- crazy thing, she probably was rich too. She right. just wasn't rich enough, which is crazy. Just what I'm saying. I, I mean, billionaire rich, regular rich levels of the shit. <laughs> like, see, I always thought regular rich was like you know the less than ten million dollar club. That's fine. That's that's regular rich. I guess. Right, but, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty I'm, sure I'm, I'm she was more. Was there, I think no. I'm talking about um the mother. Oh, the mother. Oh yeah, she's in the billions. I don't doubt that one bit. Yeah, but I don't think before she. I think before she married him, she was rich too. I think so too. We but really she wasn't rich enough. Right. Like she wasn't rich enough for the grandmother, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Because she was probably richer than she's probably millions, but just not billions. And now she's definitely billions. But I just thought it was so crazy that the grandmother didn't like, and it took her years for that to happen. And then. The mom was being a straight up bitch when she told Rachel, "You're not good enough." I was like, and she did it so warm in a weird way. She touched her face and said, "No." Oh, that was super passive aggressive of her too. That wasn't passive though. That no, was straight said, up no, aggressive. When you say it with a smile on your face and all slow and like you know courteous, like like, "Hi, Shanique, you're not good enough for my daughter, for my son," and it's like. You're looking me right in my eye and you're not yelling. You, you know, you, you come across like you're using your inside voice. That's passive. Cause in, in in my head, you just punch me in the face, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. But that's kind of how she came off to me for real. Like, I don't know. Like, I I went to me it was aggressive, but in like a snobby way, you know. Cause her thing was like, even if I'm cursing a bitch out, I'm be very classy about it. Mm-hmm. And that's how she treated Rachel. And but Rachel picked up on the bitchiness almost instantly. Like their first meeting, like the mom was dissecting every part of her life. And then after it was over, Rachel was like, nah, uh-uh, she don't like No, it's, it's not even that. While Rachel was talking, she was still, like, giving direction to the whole cooking team and all that. Like, she was distracted a lot and barely giving her the time of day to, like, you know, explain herself to watch who she is and whatever. And, like, it, it wasn't, like, to be fair, it was in a setting, like, not really good for meeting someone. Like, she should, like, took her to outside where, like, there was no distractions. She was like, hey, make some soup. Hey, do this right. Hey, go over there. And, like, you know mid-sentence she'd start like barking out orders or whatever so i'm like oh she ain't, she ain't 100 percent here you know she already had like a, a a predisposed opinion of her before she even got there so she was like eh, all right not the only difference between today and yesterday is i'm not gonna see you what i think of you is still the same so uh, she's kind of right there for me and and another thing that also leads me back to nick young being stupid well i should say Rady one age kind of fucked it up because she didn't have a chance to just meet Rachel, like, without any influence. Right. She probably had all the research before she even met Rachel. Mm-hmm. She probably knew about her mom. Not, obviously, the got, thing got, about got her mom. Board. Yeah, right. But at least knew her mom was, like, a single mother. Right. Because she didn't seem surprised by anything that Rachel was saying. Mm-hmm. So, she probably did a little bit of research on her before she met her. And that kind of also led Rachel into a trap in a weird way. Like I said, he set her up to fail. And Rady won not in, and Radio One Asia. Who Rachel's that? not a part of, but it's, I guess it's like for those who are like more tightly connected back to China and the e- Eastern countries or whatever. Yeah. Even though I think that's just, it's kind of like Asian version uh, of the Shade Room. Oh, you, boy. That's what it felt like when I was watching. I was like, oh. it, it sounded like the Shade Room because it seemed like, like they just spread everyone's business. It's just like the Asian version of that. Like, they just have like, ping, 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 and everyone reads it and it trends. And it, and it was such a silly thing to trend. A picture of Nick with a girl. That was, that was it. I mean, Everyone it, in Asia knew in like four minutes. Yeah, but when you high status like that, you know, it's easy. I will admit Radio 1 Asia is really impressive because, like I said, <laughs> I think the scene actually started out with like them sharing a dessert. And then before the dessert got finished, the mom called. And I was like, this shit ain't even cold yet. Like, what the fuck, guys? <laughs> like, shit. Like, Give yeah. it some time. Yeah, like they were like, yo, we got to let you know right away, right, right away. Um, but 
I, the mom, I understood her. I just think if she would have just talked to her more. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I would think she'd be better. Because the grandmother probably treated her the same way. Right. She kind of did throughout the movie too, where she said, um, "With the dumpling scene, she's like, oh, these are these aren't very well, well made and all that kind of stuff.'" Yeah, the grandmother was still shading her, but she can't really do anything because she's probably it's... responsible for her health and stuff. So mm-hmm. she gotta be like, "I'm gonna shade you," but like, low key though, like I feel like Eleanor is like, "Yo, when my husband died, go yeah. no, <laughs> I'm like." I'm playing. She probably wouldn't just out of respect for her, mm-hmm, like right. Cause the, the, the husband. Family's a big deal there, whether or not you hate him or love him. Because you know. Speaking of hate, everyone else in Nick family besides the cousins. Mm-hmm. That douchebag that was like one of the groomsmen oh, who yeah. threw the bachelor party. Yeah. What the fuck was that dude like? He was such a douchebag. They were, they were talking about him before. He was like Bernard or whatever it was. Like yeah. When they were younger, like he punched him in the face or something like that. Yeah. I think it was the same guy anyway. I could be wrong. Cover me in the comments. But yeah, they were like saying, even before they got there, like, yo, this guy is a complete dick and he's the one responsible for the bachelor party. Yeah, I think they had to do it for like business reasons. But I was just like, he's such a douchebag. Right. He's like an Asian riffraff. And I, just, <laughs> I can't. I just can't with him. Like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know enough about riffraff, but okay. I know he got weird teeth. That's all I know. The weird like vampire teeth or some shit. Mannerisms and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. with the party and the girls and yada yada, and randomly shooting a rocket launcher. Like, is it okay that he should shot rockets into the ocean? I guess it's international waters, so technically no country like has jurisdiction over it. However, someone did get hit with the kickback of that rocket launcher, and I'm like. Nearest hospital about four hours back that way, so I don't know what we're no, talking we about. No, we eat this. those. We eat those rocket lunches. <laughs> I guess we have to now. Yeah. Fuck around, look like um Walker from Mission Impossible with the burnt off face and shit. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Okay. Who had the craziest party? The, the men. Boys. The men. The men. Easy. The men. They had a whole boat. They had like a whole like party island, but it was on a boat thing going on, and the girls' party it wasn't even all that for real. It was definitely girly, though. Yeah. But to me, like, you got, first of all, bitches. Like, her friends, Amara, right? That's the girl's name? Uh, the we'll bride. I'm actually not sure. <laughs> it's something with an A, but it's like Amara. I'm pretty sure it's Amara. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But they, basically, apparently she's still friends with Nick's ex, Amanda. And... She played the shit out of Rachel. I thought she was going to be another nice one. I'm like, all right, yes. another woman I like. And then she just turned out to be a backstabbing bitch because Nick didn't pick her. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh. She was definitely a sour ex and she showed it hard. Which helped the one of the following scenes at the wedding when she showed up looking baller as shit. And like she said, yo, you're in my way. To the side, please. I'm going to go sit beside a princess. Unlike you fucking peasants out here. I know. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it it did help set up her character a lot, but like, that also showed that the network of females who were like really salty as well. Like, oh, this is a gold digging bitch. We're gonna put like a dead fish on her bed or whatever. Yeah, cause they're like, oh, well, I have all this money. Why he didn't pick me? Right. And it's funny because some of her friends, some of Amanda's friends, were trying to get with Nick anyway, so they're not trustworthy either. Because if you had it, they probably thinking that shit behind your back. Right. Like none of them were trustworthy besides Astrid and. And to be. F- and what pig went, and that's about it. To be fair, too, there was the one dude on um the the party boat who pissed off Nick too. I don't know if everyone thought the same thing, which I'm I'm assuming they probably did on some level, but you know they're guys, so they can like I guess. You oh, know, the other cousin. Right, the one that... with, um, with the shitty actress girlfriend, whatever she was. No, I thought you were talking. Oh, that might have been. I don't know. He was wearing one of the sashes. He had like two girls on his arm. I'm actually not sure who he was. So correct us in the comments for that one. I too. think he was just a random nigga. Yeah, but he was like making some more like gold gold digging jokes about his girlfriend. He was about to get punched in the neck because he said something Nick, about her boobs. Yeah, know? yeah. He used to ride. He was flat chested, right? And like Nick was like, "Yo, I'll throw you into the fucking ocean right now, son." <laughs> Yo, it was that serious for him. Yeah, but but yeah, like when that happened, I was like, "All right, so they have their own ways of showing it, whether you're a boy or a girl." But, like, it was, it was definitely some shit there with, like, her being the talk of the town. No matter where she goes, no matter what gender she's working with, someone's going to be talking about her. And you know what another thing that kind of, like, made it crazy? Before he met with the mom, before Rachel met with the mom, he still didn't tell her how crazy rich he was. Yeah. It wasn't until his friend said, her friend was like, yo, he, like, 
rich, rich. Mm-hmm. Like he, he thought he was rich. rich. Yeah, he, he like old money. Right. Like probably his great grandchildren would still have money. Heck yeah. No, well, wait, wait, way beyond that. Unless they literally like try to buy like decent sized islands out in the middle of nowhere and try to like fund it and make a whole new nation, they'll be fine. <laughs> like yeah. I, I made a, a, a joke earlier that said um, I could probably do for twenty generations. That's probably small. Yeah. Depending on how they use their money, that could be like infinite generations. And especially since they're still growing. Right. They're also only from the, except for Nick and then I guess Astrid's well she's still married rich but not as rich. They're mostly marrying millionaires. Mm. So they're extending their growth right. anyway. Right. Like um, the best friend, right? He has, his family has a whole chain of stuff. The wife that he's marrying, she's the heir to a company that has like 20 different resorts. Right. Like the, I think all of the resorts in like Asia or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. So she rich too. She gave away free spa treatments, free, a free, like all space, pens, like shopping spree for her bachelorette party. With expensive ass clothes, by the way. Like this yes. is like hundred thousand dollar dresses and shit. That I'll be exaggerating, but up there somewhere, like it's fucking expensive, nigga. Yeah. So it was like crazy on an island, too. Right. Now they rented out Samsara Island and some other shit. I'm like yo. And they took a private jet there. Like they had the whole airport to themselves. This was not normal at all. Uh-uh. And they were just so like assholes. And I was just like. I get if they thought she was a gold digger, but if Nick explained that she didn't know him, mm-hmm. and everyone could see that she had no idea who any of them were, you know she's not going there because she didn't even know. But they they were just salty. Every most of the women in the movie were assholes, except there were guys too, like that other cousin who was like super serious. Like, all right, I need oh, to have my face from the optimal, way. optimal angle or whatever it is. Yeah, his him and his wife hate each other like a hundred percent. Oh yeah, no doubt. I don't know how they had three kids. I, I I'm not sure. They're all the same age. Hey, she knew what she had to do. She was like, "All right, I gotta, I gotta have my heir." Right, exactly. <laughs> so uh, I'm like, I'm gonna have to deal with this stupid. Uh, I don't even got to the point of marrying each other when she probably could get any man. I don't know. Maybe he was less of an ass before they got married, or it's a range, right. or it's a range. That's you know. Right. But I was just like, he just dumb as shit as well. Like Nick and the best friend, and that um the designer dude who's also a cousin. Oliver, right? He's yeah. a cool guy. Those two were the only cool guys. And then you had Astrid, Rachel, and Pigwin. And that was it. And her family, too. Pigwin's family is pretty cool. The, <laughs> the, 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 the weirdest son, shit, though. The word, the word son was a little creepy, but... Yeah, he was creepy. It's and then the father was just as creepy, so I see where he get it. Yeah. And, I mean, they at least love each other. Uh, yeah. They had young daughters. I was like, I thought she was too old to have children. But hey, whatever. You never know, man. They, never they, they got the money to fix that shit, so you know. I know. <laughs> Most people are having children like in their 60s now, yeah. which, whew, boy, Jesus, don't let it be me. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I'm too old to be a mom at 60. <laughs> like, take it away. Take it away. <laughs> you know, like a face. <laughs> Woo. Thank you. All right. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah, so I guess overall, I think the theme of this movie was 100% a class of traditions. I think the mom had to finally see Rachel was willing Mm -hmm. to put the family first, and then she was able to accept her. Because in her mind, Rachel was selfish. That she would not think of the family, and she would, like, basically ruin his life right. by being so selfish with her ambitions. Mostly because, like, you know, they'd end up losing Nick because they're saying if you go with Nick... You they got to go. give it to one of those assholes. Right, exactly. So, they're like, he should have been back last year or whatever to inherit all this, you know, all the company, the coal company, whatever it is. But he's like, I ah, love first. But, you know, they had to find out this weird gray area where they could, you know, manage to keep him tight with family so that he can, you know, go ahead and run things because he's the most capable one to do it. And still, you know, have him be happy at the same time with his girl, which I feel like that Mahjong speech that she gave her, yo, at the very end. Uh, That's one of the best scenes of the movie. That was like a nail in the coffin. Like, yo, let's say she he does get happier in the future, yo. You can't say that I didn't, you know, put family first because I let him go in order for him to be happy. So if I'm willing to do that because he proposed to me all of fucking yesterday and I said no for y'all um, for his family then you can't say that I'm not willing. And now that shit was impressive to me. And I'm like, there was layers to that. I didn't even understood, uh, understand until like a minute or so later. I'm like, damn, yo. 
you actually are the most um you know responsible one when it comes to family. Yeah, and you know it, it kind of mirrored what the mom's sacrifice was. Right. Because the mom wanted to make sure that her children were taken care of, so she let the grandmother raise her child. Uh -huh. She she actually lost years with her son. Uh -huh. Because the grandmother hated her. And she's like, you can have my son and raise him. And I was like, that is a rough thing. Yeah. Because I don't know if I could do that. I, I don't know if I could just give up my child just because you don't like me. To, like, that's a that's a rough choice. <laughs> Be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. I, I brought them into the world. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. And it's like, I couldn't afford to do it, but she could afford to do it, and the yeah. grandmother just didn't want her to. Right, that's true. She swallowed her pride and said, raise my son. And that is a, and her only child, it seems. She has a, he has a bunch of cousins, but no siblings. Right. So, that was a rough choice, and she admired Major, Rachel for that, and that's why she gave her blessing. By letting Nick propose with the ring, and I thought that was pretty cool. Which, one thing, too, about the grandma, they never really um, went back to her, because the last thing we saw about her is that she was saying, hey, I forbid this. But even after the fact that, you know, the mom gave the ring over, they never really showed the grandma's, like, reaction, like, hey, she's going to be cool with this. I mean, the movie didn't Yeah, the movie didn't care about that. And to be honest, it wasn't, like, a big deal because... She I mean, ain't I, really got... Yeah. I mean, she has respect and power and all this mm -hmm. shit. But at the end of the day... She, she's going to have the numbers game against her at that point, too. Because I think everyone started to, like, go towards Rachel's side at the very end, too. I think I, actually I think a lot more people were on Rachel's side that was in the family. Mm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It like, was just yeah. literally just like the mom and maybe the aunt. Yeah, and that's the, about it. Right, but they're like the highest ones in the family, though. It's like the most important ones. But since they had like the mom, at least, especially with like a big move, like giving her jade ring that she made herself. What like the husband made herself himself or something like that. Yeah, one of them made the ring like the um, grandma wouldn't pass down her ring. Yeah. So I was like, that's a really big move, and it means a whole lot to them going forward. So you know, we don't see the grandma's reaction to it, but I don't think for the for the sake of the story that even matters that much. Because at the end of the day, they get married. The mom already passed the blessings down. So hey, welcome to the family, Rachel Chu or Rachel Young. <laughs> yep. Also, I, we didn't talk about it, but one of the twists in the movie was that they did a background check, and ah, right. Rachel's mom lied to her. Basically, right. it was like, oh, you know, your father died before young, but actually. Turns out the truth, the the husband, the father was just a like potential father. Her, her mom's husband was a complete and utter ass yeah, who beat on her. Right. So she got the hell out. And then she met like an old friend, had an affair, but she left because he thought he would kill her. Uh, and the baby found out right. Which back in the day they used to do things oh, like hell that. Oh yeah, they still doing that. Fuck that. Yeah, in certain countries, yeah. And um, she raised her daughter, which I think she did a great job. She did what she had to. Mm, you made a whole profession. She's a first generation immigrant and she made a professor out of her, so that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So, you know what? Fuck Eleanor and Nancy. <laughs> and the grandma. Yeah, the grandma, yeah, especially her, because they, they were all like, We gotta talk to you over here and we're gonna like drop At least this they did it in we, private. We, we, that could have been mean, worse. Yeah, but it's like you're right. It could it could have been worse. But at the end of the day, like you had you hired PIs on me, yo. Really, nigga. Yeah. Hey, that's extra, but whatever. And you know what? I one thing I would say that I love Nick never doubted her. Right. And that's a good thing, because usually when that shit happens, they always doubt. But he knows her so well, you know he wouldn't lie. Right. And you, you can look at her face and tell her she didn't even know the shit. Yeah, she was devastated. Like that was not cool. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Cause just because that happened doesn't mean the the Rachel lied. Especially since Rachel didn't know. I don't know if I would lie about that. I'd be like. Mm. My mother's mistake. I mean, I, guess, I wouldn't put it that way, but I wouldn't lie about it. I, I, I guess at some point you kind of figure like you know, there's a point where like they're too young to know, and I guess because you use that point for so long to the point where the age like you know, it's they're old enough to know it now, but I've been telling it for so long that I'm gonna stick with it, you know. Because don't get me wrong, I would honestly tell the truth to 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 a son or daughter. However, not when they're like you know in preschool or middle school or high school nothing like that. Like, all right, I'm gonna wait. But if I've been doing it for like let's say. 15, 16 I'm just years. gonna keep going. Yeah, for real. I'm just like, <laughs> fuck it, it works so far. Like, I may as well keep lying now. Like, shit. You know, um, I think I told you about this, but it reminds me of like Tyler Perry's situation. Mm -hmm, right. Where his mom kept lying about who his father was. Mm -hmm. Even, I mean, she took it far. Like, she she lied on her deathbed. It was like, that's yeah, your dad. Right. But maybe she meant, like, you know, that's your father because he raised you. Right. But I was just like, I, I, I get why people do it. But it's not right at the same time. Okay, completely agree. Yeah, but um, um, did we miss anything? No, we covered everything. You know, they're really rich. 
it was a, it's to me it's a funny movie. Oh, I never said who my favorite character was. Favorite character is Rachel. Rachel. She's the best character movie, followed by Pigwin and Asterisk, the girls. Solid. Hold yeah. down the movie. I would actually say those are the top three as well. Nick, to some extent, you know... He's a little naive, for, for, but he's for, still a good yeah, guy. For, for a guy who wears his heart on his sleeve, he's a very good guy. For a guy who was like, you know, probably has a hard time, you know, taking his pick of the litter when it comes to girls. He can have anybody he wants in the world. I'd say that he actually did, did follow his heart. He didn't just go for the first rich thing to land on his lap. And that's why the other girl um, failed, you know, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I completely agree with the same ones. There's my, they're mine as well. All right, so I'm gonna close out this podcast. Hit us up on Twitter at Echo You Podcast. Um, you can also find us on any social media sites and any podcasting apps, all under Echo Underground Podcast. And we'll see you guys next episode. Bye. See ya.